Dell Precision <laughs> since, I don't know, about 2004, mate, near 20 years ago. Those two combined words, in the CAD and engineering space at least, have become synonymous with no compromise performance, right? It's, it's that thing that you couldn't really ever justify paying for for yourself, but I'm sure there's tons of other people who need all that power, right? Elite people doing elite things. And fun fact, my self-learning journey on 3D CAD back in the day began by actually 3D modeling up the laptop that I was sat in front of at the time, which was indeed one of the early precision models from 2004. And since then, Dell have been smashing it out of the park, jamming outrageous pro-centric specs into a laptop, just making it work. So now that we've got our first soiree, with Intel's 12th gen hybrid architecture dancing into the latest precision. That's where the type of this video, Neil. Well, back in May, this handsome young devil power, power walked out onto the Intel Vision Biz Insight stage and introduced Intel's new Core HX mobile processor platform to the world. Long story short, mate, Core HX is superseding the outgoing mobile Xeon processors, which we've had for the last couple of years, and is now desktop caliber silicon, and it's based on the exact same CPU die as the likes of the flagship desktop Core i9-12900K. Now, to make this work inside of modern day laptops, which are about as thin as the Tories' chances of winning the next election, uh, slight adjustments are in order, mate. So Intel dropped the frequencies a bit for Core HX, lowered the power requirements, and then passed the baton over to the system partners to see what they can do with it. And MSI were the first to release a Core HX-based laptop the 17 inch GT77 Titan was what I was using all the way through the months leading up to that launch event and at the launch event itself. And mate, that thing was absolutely staggering. Performance was almost on par with 12900K desktops. The hybrid workflows were beautiful. I just couldn't wait to see what Dell's precision team could do with this platform once the 17 inch precision 7770 was ready. Well, it's ready now, and um, I don't really know where to start with this. I, I suppose I should probably start with my first impressions, and I'm not gonna lie, mate, that was, looks like, looks like they've sent me the 15 inch version instead of the 17 inch. Genuinely thought that, because it was tiny. Bearing in mind, MSI had to add this huge extra section to the rear of the Titan to help cool their desktop CPU in a laptop. This precision felt even smaller than the last one, and, and I, was, I was right, they've managed to make the overall body of the 7770 two mil thinner than last year's model and took two mil off the width. Outstanding, I guess. Good job, Dell. And it's not just that, mate. The smaller body is packing in even more powerful parts than ever before. You can spec up to a Pro RTX A 5500 GPU or even the RTX 3080 Ti graphics card. Yeah, it's an option as well and a precision. On top of that, you can put in a 4K 120 hertz display that can be configured, 128 gigs of DDR5 RAM, up to 16 terabytes of storage through four PCI Express Gen 4 M.2 solid state drives, along with all the usual precision trimmings, right? Like smart card readers and SIM card support, all the business stuff. The dual Thunderbolt 4 ports are nice as well, but they've removed one of the USB-A ports from last year and the mini display port out, and instead left us with just two USB-A ports and one USB-C, which is, jewels up to be DisplayPort capable. But what sucks big time about this, mate, is the Ethernet port still being just one gig LAN. Come on, Dell. Something like this should at least have 10 gig Ethernet by this point. And the metal and overall material build quality is typically exceptional, precision standards, if not identical to last year's. Same with the keyboard and the trackpad. No real noticeable changes from last year with the webcam finally now being 1080p, but don't expect miracles from that. So all in, that's some serious high-end flagship hardcore gear packed into the precision right there. And you'd be right in assuming that Dell would have to reconsider that 240 watt power supply they've been consistently bundling in with the precision line since about 2014. After all, MSI had to ship this massive 330 watt power supply with the comparably specced Titan. So imagine my surprise when I saw that they'd kept the same 240 watt power supply that they'd been using for the last eight years. I have questions. I have questions like, how do you make 240 watts work with all of this new gear? And what you also have to consider, mate, is that Dell are still recommending the existing WD19 DCS Universal Dock for use with 2022's Precision 7770. And that dock, mate, only supplies 210 watts of power. And they recommend it can be used as an alternate power source. So. More questions appear from the wild. Does that mean the 7770 is optimized to only use 210 watts, not 240 watts of power? How, how have you done this? 
Well, this is the part where we address the title of the video, mate. They just haven't done it. <laughs> they didn't make it work. So let's look for some answers surrounding that power supply, mate. MSI's Titan with an RTX 3080 Ti during a V-Ray GPU render pulls around 174 watts of power at full tilt. The Precision 7770, on the other hand, performing the exact same test using the exact same graphics card is capped all the way down to 120 watts. So the answer appears to be, let's just significantly handicap the power supply on our no compromise mobile workstation. Now, don't get me wrong, slicing 30% power from the GPU won't result in 30% less performance, but it is less performance. Things go from bad to worse though, mate, when we look at how Dell have been handling the CPU, the core component of a mobile workstation. And that's per the Intel guidelines, mate. The Core HX i9 has a power limit of 157 watts max turbo power. And MSI are delivering exactly on spec during a V-Ray CPU render. It peaks at 157 watts and then averages out at around 125 watts of sustained power. And let's be clear, mate, that's what this processor needs to be what it is and do what it does. Those limits are there for a reason. But Dell, they, they just didn't or can't Get that much power to the CPU, and the end result is only around 120 watts peak power, which, to be clear, mate, it only pulls for a split second before dipping to around 80 to 90 watts of sustained power use. Now, if you think to yourself, I don't care, I, this doesn't matter to me, I've never been interested in all these numbers, it's a precision, it's bound to deliver on actual end performance. Negative on that Ghost Rider, because there's less power, that means there's less clock frequencies and less frequency is guaranteed less performance. The i9 and the MSI runs at around 4 to 4.2 gigahertz frequency on all P cores and around 3.2 gigahertz on the E cores during an all core heavy workload. The precision on the other hand, doing the same task, pegs back to 2.8 gigahertz on the P cores and a mere 2.3 gigahertz on the E cores with a concerning dip to 1.4 gigahertz at times. And this is all with their ultra performance power plans all enabled and running on AC power. What's the end result of all of this? Well, a rather embarrassing score of 13173 for the precision at Cinebench R23. Although this thing is bordering on bipolar, mate, because that's what you get most days. But then you can randomly I'd run a test on it another day and it'll throw out a score of 16,000, which, don't get me wrong, is still absolutely abysmal, but it'll then just swing back into the 13,000s at will. And just to put some context on how bad this is, the MSI with the exact same processor running at spec scores 22,500, whilst last year's 11th gen precision with eight fewer cores on older architecture scored 12,500. So basically, Intel have gave Dell a processor with eight more cores and they've managed to only squeeze between 5 to 25% gain from it, whilst MSI have managed the expected 80% gain, supplying the right amount of power that the processor needs. But it gets worse, mate. Believe that. In a futile attempt to likely counterbalance the power starve components, Dell are plowing an absolutely ludicrous 1.62 volts into the Precision's CPU. Now, whilst half the audience clean up the drink that they've just spewed out all over their desks, let me explain. A typical normal operating voltage supply to a CPU is around 1.2 to 1.4 volts. 1.62 for context, that's what extreme overclockers were supplying. For example, in LTT's video here, using liquid nitrogen cooling to get the same CPU to run at 6.9 gigahertz frequency. Now, although there's nothing about this in the patch notes, a recent BIOS update from Dell appears to have lowered that voltage limit from 1.62 to 1.58. But even that's still well within the realms of being potentially damaging to the longer term health of your processor. So what all this comes down to, mate, when you combine an insufficient power supply, anemic cooling, Dell just reduced the body rather than increased it, so they've got less cooling capacity, far too much voltage. The end result is thermal throttling. And you see that quite a lot when systems are running heavy all-core workloads. The processor is going to lower its clock frequencies and dish performance in an attempt to keep it from burning out and crashing the system. Well, mate, not really all that jazz to be reporting that this new Precision 7770, it thermal throttles when the system is completely idle and there's nothing happening. Look at this, it's even an electrical design point, current throttling, it idle. And look, when pressing the Windows Start menu several times on a 10 grand mobile workstation, when that puts the CPU to 100 degrees C and causes more thermal throttling, you just know something's gone seriously wrong here. Now, don't get it twisted, mate. This isn't a faulty unit. I've had 
four of these precisions now and I've tried reproducing this on all of them and they're all the same. I've even tried replacing the thermal paste on one of them. They're all like this. So when something as light as pressing the window start menu causes thermal throttling on a mobile workstation, you can kind of see now how actual heavy workloads just don't stand a chance on this. The Envermark score has barely improved that much from 11th gen and it woefully lags behind the MSI unit with the same processor. The key shot renders, they're subpar, and when trying to use VR mate, something that the precision should be excelling at, the CPU can burn out a frame time chart and bottleneck the GPU, resulting in the unusable experiences in the VR headset. So look, if I was in your shoes, I, I would be thinking, look, mate, I don't know about this, right? This is, you've obviously got a defective laptop. <laughs> no, mate, I really haven't. I've had, like I say, four of these by this point. It's all confirmed by Dell as being expected behavior. And it's also been confirmed by a completely separate customer reporting the exact same issues on their 7770. And honestly, I don't think this is fixable within this generation. Could they possibly, through firmware, enable dual power input through both the dock and the AC adapter? I don't know, maybe. But then buying a $400 dock would become mandatory and that would go down like a shit-filled balloon. And if you think about the fact that the chassis went even on the 7770 when all logic points to and suggested that it needed to be bigger. Does this suggest some kind of internal mandate within Dell forcing the engineering team to streamline the products down, make them thinner and lighter, just, just disregarding all cause and effect, possibly? Is there any potential internal mandates on external product temperatures, right? Are, they, are the teams ordered to make it so that the laptop doesn't get too hot to the touch? So what can you do with that? Crank the power down. I don't know. What I do know is there's also a 7670 mate, which is the 16 inch version of this with the exact same parts in an even smaller chassis. I dread to think how poor the performance is gonna be on that one. So all in, the 7770 is far from living up to expectations. Uh, it's heavily pegged back, anemic cooling, thermal throttling. It's not delivering on Core HX. And it's frankly a bit of an embarrassment to Intel's new outstanding new CPU processor platform. So I can't advocate for this, unfortunately, but there are two types of buyers. There'll be those who, like me, understand all of this, know what to expect parts like this. Then there's the other buyers who, as long as their laptop feels and looks newer than their old one, well, then they're happy. They're not gonna notice any of this because their opinions are kind of based on subjective feelings and perceptions rather than objective information gathering. For those guys, buying a 7770 is gonna be an excellent experience. It's well-built, it's well-equipped, and it's gonna do them well. They'll be well happy with it, but for everyone else, there's something seriously wrong with this generation. Dell are aware of it. I've fed all this through to them. I'm not sure how seriously it's been taken or if there's anything that can be done about it, but yeah, it's not great. But if you wanna see something that might be great, stay tuned to the channel, mate, and get subscribed because quite soon, we're gonna be getting in one of MSI's Create Pro workstations, which is basically the body of the GT77 Titan with professional parts crammed inside of it. That one should be spectacular. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. That's been the Precision 7770. It's sad. I had high expectations for this from a bit good. But thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.